military carrying out airstrikes in Syria overnight after a drone attack on a coalition base killed an American contractor and injured six others. The Pentagon blaming Iranian-backed militias. The aggression follows a disturbing pattern as U.S. troops have come under attack from Iranian-backed forces nearly 80 times since 2021. Republican Kentucky Congressman Andy Barr joins us now. He serves in the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Congressman, good to have you with us. Apparently, just in the last little while, Iranian proxies in retaliation for the U.S. airstrike fired some seven rockets back at that U.S. Uh, base. Uh, we haven't heard about any casualties at this point. But given everything that's going on, does, does the Biden administration need to be more forceful against not only these proxies, but, but against Iran itself? Uh, yes, John, and it just goes to show that <clears throat> weakness invites aggression. And when you're engaged in an effort to provide sanctions relief to the mullahs in Tehran, uh, this invites aggression. Uh, the sanctions relief that the, that the Biden administration is proposing to deliver uh, to Tehran would actually embolden these proxy terrorist groups, uh, and it would help Iran finance the very terrorists who attacked uh, our uh, assets and our, our American uh, soldiers uh, just last night. All right, so Iran is now the junior partner in an axis of authoritarianism that also includes Russia and China. The, the president has been teasing that he's going to talk to President Xi about all of this at some point, but Karine Jean-Pierre at the briefing yesterday didn't seem to indicate any firm timeline. Listen to this exchange here. Do you have any updates on a possible Biden Xi call now that the Chinese leadership is in place? So that is something that we're we, we were looking forward to, to doing and we've been working on. I just don't have anything to, to confirm or lay out or anything to uh, preview at this time. Does, does it seem logical to you that all of these recent developments regarding China would, would seem to increase the urgency of the need for contact between President Biden and Xi? Well, it does. And this week's summit between President Putin and Chinese leader Xi in Moscow underscores and reinforces the no limits relationship between those mm -hmm. two authoritarian powers, adversaries of the West and the United States. In fact, uh, pr uh, uh, General Secretary Xi referred to the meeting as a new chapter in the uh, relationship between those two uh, regimes. And it was portrayed in ch China uh, as a effort to create a new world order. That is the last thing we need is a new world order uh, that binds uh, China and Russia. And, and we know from trade and customs data uh, that, uh, that China is assisting Russia in its illegal and uh, unprovoked aggression in Ukraine. Not only uh, is uh, the Chinese Communist Party financing Russia by buying more of their uh, oil and natural gas from Russia, but also they're providing lethal assistance, something that uh, the, Biden, the Biden administration is, is saying they're watching. We actually have the customs and trade data per, to prove it. So you had the Secretary of State before your committee, and, and you seem to suggest to him that the Biden administration was not being tough enough on China, using as a point of inflection the recent balloon overflight. Let me just play that exchange here. The fact that we didn't shoot it down before it entered our airspace over the Pacific, not over the Atlantic, was an invitation for further incursions. Talk is cheap. Deterrence requires force. Talk is cheap. Deterrence requires force. Do you see anything from this administration that begins to even resemble deterrence? Well, unfortunately, no, because when Secretary Blinken finally did meet with his counterpart, uh, the uh, top diplomat from China, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Wong, uh, he didn't he didn't do anything. He didn't say he, he just said, don't do this again. Uh, that is not sufficient. In fact, the reaction from the Chinese side was, well, these talks allow us to move on past the balloon. We can we can talk and negotiate about other things. That is not sufficient. This requires uh, a response, a response in, in the form of sanctions. And also, uh, we can't allow a spy balloon to traverse the United States and just take it, take it down when it passes over all of our military assets, headquarters, for, for our B-2 bombers, Fort Campbell, Kentucky, yeah. in my state, uh, Malmstrom Air, Air Force Base, where our nuclear triad is, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, uh, the STRATCOM command. Uh, this was a violation of U.S. sovereignty and international law, but we can't just talk about how we were dissatisfied with that. We actually have to deter. All right.